In this series of videos, we're going to look at how we can compute the value of work, which are called simply as another word for energy from motion. And we're going to discover that this is a rich supply of integrals. If you want to know why we learn integration engineering, this is just one of the many, many ways, but it's one of the more accessible ways to be able to see where an integral naturally arises. Now recall that work is a product. It's an element of force times distance, and the force is in newtons, and if the distance is in meters, then we get joules of energy from that product. When things are nice and simple, if you have a constant force and you apply it over a fixed distance, then you simply multiply your force by your distance and then you get the total amount of energy required, the amount of work done. The challenge comes in when we have either one of these two elements varying then we would imagine maybe moving a small amount of force or moving a small distance and then adding up that contribution to the total work over time or over distance. It's gonna turn into an integral in quite a nice and elegant way. Let's see this in practice. To start off, we're gonna have a fairly simple scenario where we have an object that we have it starting at zero and we pull it to x equals 15. And this time, we'll start easy. We have a constant force of five newtons. So we're always pulling with a force of five newtons. So the distance is fixed, the force is constant, and if that's the case, then we can say our work is equal to force times distance, and so we've applied a five newton force to over a 15 meter spread, and that comes out to be 75 joules. It will require 75 joules of energy, or we'll input 75 joules of work to achieve this goal. Let's take that scenario and change it up just a little bit by modifying the force. So here, we're still going to go from x equals 0 to 15. The difference is that our force is basically 5 newtons, but it gets a little lighter as we move along. So this force is varying with x. And so if we ask, well, what's force times distance? Well, it depends when we're asking that. At position zero, we have a force of five newtons. At the end, at 15, we'd be subtracting 1.5. The force we had to apply for that last little push is smaller. It's only 3.5 newtons. So we have a different force at different points along the way. So how are we going to get a total work out of this? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a little sum and we're gonna figure out the work required to move. Well, what would be a nice increment of movement? Hey, how about delta x? We're gonna move a little bit, delta x. Then we're gonna move delta x again. Then we're gonna move delta x again. And how does that help us? If delta x is small, then if you look at the force calculation, if I'm only moving from here to the next door neighbor point, the force is basically five newtons for that whole thing. The way I like to work on these problems is to take the same approach we did with slicing. Here we have a journey of 15 meters to take, but each step of the journey is a step of just delta x. And so on one step, the work is going to equal force times distance, and here, because the distance is small, we can use the same force value for it, and then the distance is small because it's going to be just delta x. And so the force is going to be our formula here, five minus 0.1 x's times a step of delta x. What we imagine is, as we take little steps, the x is gonna change a little bit, but on an individual step, it's going to be roughly constant, so we get a reasonable work calculation. Of course, we're doing integrals in the end, so in the limit, these delta x's are going to be infinitesimally small. The force will be constant over those super tiny intervals, and so it's a perfect match to our integral idea. So on one step, our work calculation is done. The total work is going to equal what we get when we add all of these things up, which we know now is an integral of our force, times our distances, only we turn delta x's into dx's with our integral notation. And 
Here's where we say where we start and end. Our integral from 0 to 15 meters of our force times little increments of x as we cover that territory captures perfectly what we mean by the total work as we move from the start to the end point here. And now we're perfectly positioned to do the calculation. So the total work is that integral from 0 to 15 of 5 minus 0.1x with respect to x. And now we can think less about the units. The units make sense in our construction of the integral. Now we take the fundamental theorem of calculus and say, all right, this is just some abstract calculation we need to perform. And so we do that by taking the antiderivative. And this particular function here is simple enough that we can anti-differentiate it by inspection. Uh, 5 goes to 5x, negative 0.1x goes to negative 0.1x squared over 2. This is a definite integral, so we don't need the plus c. Instead, we're going to have a start and end point. And a reminder, those are x values. And when we're done here, we're going to have 5 times 15 minus 0 0.1 over 2 times 15 squared. And then all of that minus 0 minus 0. Fortunately, that doesn't play a role. And if we get our calculator out, we're going to get 63.75. Now, if we want to check our units, we absolutely can. This was in units of Newtons for the force. And each of these dx's were small increments of distances. So Newtons times meters and Newton meters are joules. And that's how we can use a motivating problem that works with a well-known formula, force times distance equals energy equals work and adapt it to a scenario where it might not be as obvious how those, how those terms combine when one of them is changing. Here, the force was changing. Fortunately, if we just reduce things down to a small interval, that often gets around our problem where things remain roughly constant if we have a small enough interval. And here, we want to just add all that back up together. Once we're done, the contributions of each interval one by one, well, an integral takes care of that for us perfectly.